Assalamu alaikum. Today we talk about the enamel structure. Enamel is a biological tissue present as outer most covering of the crown. This is the enamel. Cover the crown, cover the dentin. And this represents the mature enamel. It is epithelially derived hard tissue formed by amyloblasts, as we say in the previous lecture in amylogenesis, which cannot be reformed itself. Non vital as it, uh, physical properties of the enamel is a translucent tissue. This is the uh, mature enamel, and this is the dentin. It translucent, it take the color of the dentin below it, yellowish to whitish to gray white in color, thickness vary in the cast of the highest thickness, uh, varies in hardness also, uh, specific gravity and density, and it is a semi permeable structure. Chemical composition of the enamel is composed of organic and uh, inorganic and organic and water. A mature enamel uh, in inorganic structure is about 96% hydroxyapatite crystals, while the remaining is the organic and water, which represent 4%, which uh, the protein is amylogenin and uh, non amylogenin and water. The structures of the enamel, uh, the enamel composed of uh, three structure, which is the enamel rod and inter, inter, uh, inter rod substance and rod sheath. Rod and inter rod substance is composed of hydroxyapatite crystals and they formed by the Thomson process of the amyloblast during secretory stage. We discussed this before in the previous lecture. Enamel consists of rod, rod sheath, and inter-rod enamel. Five million of uh, these rods present in the mandibular lateral tool uh, to 12 million in the maxillary first molar. Tortoise course from the dentino enamel junction to the outer surface, diameter near the dentino enamel junction to the outer surface the ratio is about one in the dentino enamel junction and two in the uh, outer surface so in the outer surface is the double diameter enamel rod shape as a cylindrical in shape as we say, it starts from the dentino enamel junction to the outer enamel surface. Take the full thickness of the enamel. Number about 5 million in the lower lateral incisor to 12 million in upper first uh, molar. Course is torturous from the dentino enamel junction to the surface. Length of the enamel rod is greater than the thickness of the enamel. Diameter about 4 micron in length microscopically. It increases from the dentino enamel junction to the outer enamel surface by a ratio of 1 to 2 since the outer surface of the enamel is greater than the inner surface. Appearance a clear crystalline. This is the electronic microscopical structures of the uh, enamel. This is the enamel cover the dentin of the crown and this is represent the enamel structure which composed of hydroxyapatite crystals uh, inside the rod and inter rod uh, substance this is the rod the crystals inside the enamel rod and this is the crystals inside the inter rod substance both of them is the same structure but different in uh, direction. The crystals is different in direction that present in the inter-rod substance 
than the uh, crystal supposite inside the rod. The enamel rod take different uh, shape the during section. Either it uh, appear as uh, fish scale appearance like this. This is the enamel rod and the area between the two enamel rod represent the interval uh, substance. This here. This diagram represents the keyhole appearance of the enamel rod in the cross section. This represents the keyhole. This is the enamel rod. The body is the enamel rod and the tail is represent the interrod substance. This is also the uh, crystals present inside the enamel rod and the crystals present inside the interrod substance. And this is the keyhole appearance. This represents the enamel rod. And this represents the tail between two adjacent enamel rods. This is the represents the interrod substance. And this is the enamel sheet. This lighter area represents the enamel she uh, sheet. The rod sheet, a thin peripheral layer darker than the rod relatively acid resistant less calcified and contain more organic matter than the rod itself electron microscopical often incomplete this is the rod sheet and this is the rod and this is the interrod substance this is the structure of the enamel the interprismatic substance or the interrod substance is the cementing enamel rod together because it's present between two adjacent enamel rods, more calcified than the rod sheet because the rod sheet is uh, composed of uh, organic material and it is less calcified than the interrod substance. Less the interrod uh, substance is less calcified than the rod itself. So the more calcified area inside the enamel is the enamel rod, then the interrod substance, then the uh, rod sheet. Appear to be minimum in human teeth. Direction of the enamel rod. Direction in the deciduous tooth. Rod are oriented at right angle to the dentinal surface. In the cervical and central part of the crown of the deciduous teeth, they are approximately horizontal. This is the direction of the enamel rod in the cervical and the uh, central of the uh, tooth is horizontal. Near the incisal edge, and tip of the cast they change gradually to an increasingly oblique this become oblique and uh, until they almost vertical in the uh, edge or tip of the cusp of the deciduous tooth while in the permanent teeth arrangement of the rod is similar to the deciduous teeth in occlusion two-third this is the occlusion two-third. In the cervical region, rod di deviate from the horizontal to the apical direction. This is the apical direction. Alternative clockwise and counterclockwise alternation. Deviation of the rod from the radial direction can be observed at all level. This is the direction of the enamel rod, which needed during cavity preparation when uh, done cavity preparation, we must know the direction of the enamel rod inside the, uh, all the enamel in the occlusion and the, in the middle region of the tooth and the, in the cervical region. Incremental line in the enamel. We have three types of incremental line present inside the enamel. 
One of them is the incremental line of Rutesius or line of Rutesius. This is the line of Rutesius from the dentino enamel junction to the uh, enamel surface. This is hypocalcified area. Uh, appear as a brownish band in the ground section of the enamel. Represent incremental uh, deposition of the enamel. Successive opposition of layer of the enamel. Represent weekly rhythm of the enamel formation. This is present in the longitudinal and also in the cross section of the uh, ground section of the enamel. In uh, cross section, it appears look like the uh, ring of the tree around the dentino enamel junction. This is the uh, cross section, it's a tire of Rutesius. This, this line surrounding the dentino enamel junction. And this is in the longitudinal ground section. This is the citrae of Rutesius, which is represent the hypocalcified area present from the dentino enamel junction to the surface of the enamel. When end in the surface of the enamel, enamel is uh, represent as perichymata, which one of the surface structure of the enamel. The significance of this uh, incremental line or stria of Rutesius, this line become a prominent during carious attack. Also, it reflects variation in the structure and mineralization during the growth. Help in chronological mapping of the dental development. Chronologically, we uh, we can know the uh, age of the tooth from these uh, citrae of Rutesius. Another uh, incremental line present in the enamel is the cross citriation. This is the cross citriation. This line represents the segment of the uh, uh, enamel rod to segment. This is daily deposition of the enamel. It looks like the von Ebner line present inside the dentine. The dark transverse uh, lines seen crossing the enamel giving a striated appearance to the enamel rod. Represent daily increments of the growth during enamel formation. Rate of enamel formation daily is about 4 micron a day. So this represents the enamel rod and this is the segment in the enamel rod represent the cross striation between one segment and another about 4 micron which represent the daily deposition of the enamel. The third line or incremental line present in the enamel is the neonatal line. This is the neonatal line which uh, between the prenatal enamel and postnatal enamel, which represent this line represents the situated incremental line of Rutesius during birth, boundary between prenatal and postnatal enamel, usually seen in the deciduous teeth and permanent first molar. This occurs due to the uh, variation in the uh, environment and in nutrition. This line also seen inside the dentine. Another uh, histological structure uh, seen in the enamel is the hunter Schrager band. This is alternating dark and white band present uh, from the uh, dentino enamel junction to not reach to the surface. This is an optical phenomena produced by the changing in the direction between the adjacent uh, group of rod. Alternating light and dark band are seen in the longitudinal 
section under oblique reflected light usually found in the inner two-third of the enamel starting from the dentino enamel junction this is the alternating dark and light band uh, from the dentino enamel junction to about two-thirds not reached to the enamel surface this uh, uh, seen uh, during reflection the light on the longitudinal brown section of the enamel Another histological features of in the uh, enamel is it's called gnarled enamel. A gnarled enamel is this is the gnarled enamel present in the cast tip and uh, a complex arrangement of the rods which intertwine irregular uh, near the caspal area or incisor region. This is uh, due to the uh, uh, enamel rod is twisting to for each uh, on each another in the cusp area, and this uh, type of enamel present only in the cusp or incisal edge is the stronger, strongest type of the enamel because it uh, withstand the force of mastication occur on the uh, incisal edge or cusp tip. This is the twisting of the enamel rod uh, in the cusp uh, region present the ignored enamel. Another structure or historical structure present inside the enamel is the enamel tuft near the dentino enamel junction. This is the enamel tuft. And this is the enamel spindle. Enamel tuft arise at the dentino enamel junction and reach into enamel to about one fifth to one third of its thickness. Only one third or uh, one fifth of the thickness of the enamel from the dentino enamel junction to inside the enamel consists of hypocalcified rods and inter prismatic substance consist of highest enamel protein conf uh, concentration this structure is uh, composed of uh, enameline protein and uh, during the formative stage and it is consist of uh, hypocalcified rod and inter rod substance This is the enamel tuft. It is a thin ribbon like structure resembling tuft of a grays, look like the grays, which is created by examining such area under low magnification and thick ground section of the enamel. Tuft consists of hypocalcified enamel rod and inter rod substance. The major organic component of tuft was. Uh, protein which is enameline another histological uh, feature or structure present inside the enamel and near the dentino enamel junction is the enamel spindle this is the enamel spindle is the thickened odontoblast process passing across the dentino enamel junction to the enamel appears dark in transmitted light and uh, when seen in a ground section commonly seen in the region of cusp where most crowding of the odontoblast occur usually seen in the uh, cusp region this is the dentinal tubules of the dentine inside the dentinal tubules is the odontoblasmic process of the odontoblast some of these odontoblast process may uh, reach to the enamel and, uh, and this area is called uh, enamel spindle and represent the only ectomesenchymal structure present inside the enamel because it uh, comes from the uh, odontoblast cells and odontoblast is uh, ectomesenchymal in origin.
while the enamel is the origin is ectoderm so this represent the only ectomesenchymal structure uh, present inside the enamel <coughs> another surface structure present is the rodless enamel or prismless enamel we talk about in the previous lecture when we uh, talk about the uh, secretory stage relatively about 30 micrometer uh, thick no prism outline seen so prismless enamel this is the electronic uh, electron microscopical structures of the enamel and this is the uh, this is the dentine this is the dentine of tubules and this is the dentino enamel junction and this is the rodless enamel or prismless enamel near the dentino enamel junction and also uh, present in the surface of the enamel seen in about 70% uh, impermanent and in all deciduous teeth common in the cervical area least are the cast tip of the enamel this is also represent the uh, rodless enamel this is the enamel and this is the dentine and this is the uh, dentino enamel junction <coughs> and this is the internal enamel near the dentino enamel junction this is the rodless enamel and this area is the rod enamel this is the enamel rod and this is the interrod substance this is also final enamel surface this is the surface area of the enamel represent here the uh, interrod substance which is one of the surface structure of the enamel also other surface structure of the enamel is the perichymata this is line transverse line are present in the newly erupted tooth these are transverse wave like a groove believed to be the external manifestation of the citria of rutisius they are typically matter per millimeter in the region of the cemento enamel junction this is the highest number present here while the least number present near the <coughs> incisal edge or cast tip about 10 per millimeter this is the pericymata this is the striae of rutisia this line represents the striae of rutisia from the dentino enamel junction to the surface when it reaches to the surface it looks like the small groove which represents the pericymata this is the perichymata on the enamel surface which represents the end manifestation of the citria of rutisius another surface structure is the uh, enamel cuticle which is delicate membrane cover the crown of a newly erupted tooth called nasmith membrane or primary enamel cuticle this is soon removed by mastication this is secreted after epithelial enamel organ retract from the cervical region during tooth development it to protect the surface of the enamel from the resorptive uh, activity of the adjacent vascular tissue before uh, protective stage the last secretion of the amyloblast is the enamel cuticle which is the protein covered the a newly formed enamel and when this uh, tooth is uh, erupted and uh, subjected to the force of mastication this enamel cuticle will be uh, degenerated and the remnant of this enamel cuticle is called nasmith membrane so the nasmith membrane is the remnant of the enamel cuticle Another surface structure is the enamel pellicle. When the erupted enamel is covered by uh, precipitated or salivary protein called pellicle, 
the protein come from the saliva and uh, attached to the enamel surface is called enamel pellicle. This pellicle deformed within hours after mechanical cleaning. It become colonized by microorganism within a day or two after formation which form bacterial plaque. So this must be removed by brushing because if this black is remain on the tooth surface may cause uh, calculus and this cause the destruction in the uh, to the uh, gingiva and cause uh, gingival inflammation and then may be progressed to the periodontitis. We have a surface structure in the enamel present in the surface of the enamel. One of these structure is the enamel lamina. This is the enamel lamina from the surface reach to the dentino enamel junction. It then leave like hypocalcified structure extending from the outer enamel to the dentino enamel junction formed due to stress and strain created during enamel maturation also called as geological uh, fault. This is the crack, also the surface structure, which is represent the uh, surface of the uh, enamel lamina. It's as narrow fissure-like structure seen on the almost all uh, surface of the enamel. Outer edge, which represents the outer edge of the enamel lamina. This appears on the decalcification, originate at the right angle from the dentino enamel junction. This is the cracks on the enamel surface. This is another one. That's all for uh, this lecture. Thank you for listening.